Hey guys, this is Cartoon Game Girl. Today I'm going to be doing a review on Super Mario 3D World for the Nintendo Wii U, released in 2013. You know, the release date isn't really that important. Or the console it's on. Anyway, this will be my review. So, I will be talking about first the plot, then... I will talk about the different elements it has, and then I'll talk about my nitpicks and the things I really loved about the game. So, here we go! So, on with the story! One beautiful night, Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and Toad are taking a stroll through the Mushroom Kingdom until they come across a mysterious looking pipe. It apparently seems to be crooked, so Mario and Luigi fix it up to put it back in its proper position. However, they realize that it was just in time for something unexpected to happen. A bunch of items come spewing out of the pipe, and then in a few seconds, a green fairy-like creature, who was a Sprixy princess, also pops out from it. She then reveals to Mario and friends that there are six other Sprixy princesses who have been kidnapped by Bowser and have taken over the kingdom. As soon as they learn about this, Bowser suddenly shows up from the pipe and traps the green Sprixy princess as well, putting her in a bottle. As soon as he goes back down the pipe, Peach quickly tries to stop him, causing her to fall into the pipe, being the first one to go after him, with Mario, Toad, and Luigi following her. As the four make their way through the pipe to go after Bowser, they then end up in the Sprixy Kingdom, which is the main setting of the game, and their journey begins as they're off to save the seven princesses. Now that we've covered the plot, it's time we take a look at the characters. So, as you already noticed, there are four playable characters. There's Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. So yeah, it's the same playable characters from Super Mario Bros. 2. In fact, this game actually shares many similarities to Super Mario Bros. 2, such as the cast of characters, the plot, and even a few other differences. So, Let's take a look at the characters. So first there's Mario. You would expect him to be playable in a Mario game. I mean, of course he is. Duh. Anyway, he's kind of an all-around type. He's well-balanced. He's kind of a very average playable character. Most notably, he is pretty quick. He jumps pretty high. And, well... That's pretty much it. Then there's Luigi. Luigi can actually jump way higher than anybody else. That's actually his trademark ability, his high jump. What's funny is that when he's in the air, he likes to kick his legs. He's very useful to go to hard to reach places. He can jump really high and that's pretty much it. Now with Peach, She's actually one of the reasons why I like this game. Because she's a playable character. Something that she hardly ever gets to be due to her being the damsel in distress most of the time. Keep in mind that this is actually her second playable appearance in a Super Mario game. With the first being Super Mario Bros. 2, obviously. The reason why I like to play as her is because, well, it's kind of rare to see her playable. Plus, she's a girl. And she's my favorite girl character, aside from Toadette, obviously. Anyway, her ability is that she can do a floaty jump, which is when she uses her dress to float up in the air for a few seconds. She is very useful to go to far places. Finally, there's Toad! Much like Peach, Toad was also a playable character in Super Mario Bros. 2. And speaking of that game, he is meant to resemble his NES sprite 
in this game with blue spots on his hat instead of red ones. Clever idea, but you know, it's still the same old toad. But what his ability is, is that he can run really, really fast. So fast that, well, I don't know. He's just really, really fast. He was also considered to be stronger in Super Mario Brothers 2, such as picking up items really quick. But he was also very fast in that game as well. Here, he's just zooming all over the place. He's a pretty cool addition. Believe it or not, you can't just play this game on your own. You can also play with friends. It has a four-player co-op. One controls Mario, another can control Luigi, another one can control Peach, and the other one can control Toad. You can play any time, especially if there's friends to help you out. It's a co-op game, much like New Super Mario Bros. Wii and New Super Mario Bros. U. This is actually the first 3D Mario game to feature four-player co-op, or any co-op multiplayer for that kind of thing. And it's pretty interesting, although it can get a little bit challenging, but you're able to figure it out, especially when you got friends around. Now, one of the most prominent features to this game is the cat suits. This is the first game to feature the cat suits. You use a super bell to turn yourself into a cat, and they're so cute. And when you're a cat, the character will do a cute little meow. That's so sweet. The cat power-up is another reason why I love this game. Because I love cats. Cats are so cute. If I would think, who is the cutest cat character? I don't know. Cat Mario is cute. Cat Luigi is cute. And so is Cat Toad. I would probably go with Cat Peach. I mean, believe it or not, Cat Peach was a playable character in Mario Kart 8. And look who else is in the game! Captain Toad! Captain Toad made his debut in Super Mario Galaxy. So, of course, he is no stranger to the Mario series. Because he's a toad, of course. But he is the Captain Toad! He is the leader of the Toad Brigade. However, Captain Toad is the only member of the Toad Brigade to appear in Super Mario 3D World. I'll talk about him more in another video when I discuss the Toad Brigade. Anyway, this character has different levels compared to the ones that Mario and friends go through. It's a puzzle! A puzzle level! They're puzzle levels that you can access with Captain Toad. He needs to collect five green stars in order to complete each level. However, unlike Mario and company, Captain Toad cannot jump because of his heavy backpack, of course. That's what makes it a puzzle game. It can be kind of challenging, but you'll get used to it. Anyway, going back to the plot a little bit more, the final boss is Meowser. You know, Cat Bowser. Bowser uses his super bell, you get the idea. Anyway, um, well, after defeating him, truly defeating him, the Sprixy princesses are free for the rest of their lives, hopefully. And Mario, Luigi, Peach and Toad all celebrate as the seven Sprixie princesses have their kingdom saved. So the four of them head back home while wearing cat suits, with all seven princesses thanking them and waving goodbye to them, hoping that they will come back again soon. Anyway, <laughs> they do! Because upon beating the game, they build a rocket ship to make you progress the game, going into outer space. Which, of course, Mario is no stranger to. 
Anyway, while in space, you can meet up with Rosalina, and she becomes a playable character too! Making the game have five playable characters. Well, six if you count Captain Toad. Rosalina is another reason why I like this game, because just like Peach, she's a girl. And this is actually the first game, well, first Super Mario platforming game, which is not a spin-off, to have Rosalina be a playable character. Much like Captain Toad, she made her debut in Super Mario Galaxy and became a part of the Super Mario Squad becoming friends with Mario. Which is perfect, because you know, in Super Mario Galaxy she did help Mario rescue Peach. And we all know how that turned out. Rosalina is a great addition. Not only is she familiar with outer space, but we also get to see appearances by Lumas. Which obviously is the greatest thing ever. I love Lumas! Rosalina also has a special ability, her spin attack, which is very similar to the spin attack that Luma gave Mario in the Super Mario Galaxy games. And Luigi, of course. Anyway, it's pretty nice to see her as a playable character, especially after the Sprixie Kingdom has been saved and the four, or five, get to venture out in outer space in a rocket ship built by the princesses. That is amazing. Anyway, it's time I talk about the biggest thing that I like about this game. And I'm pretty sure you already know what that is. The Sprixie Princesses! They make their debut in, well, this game. They are the biggest reason why I love this game. Why? Not just because they're cute and, well, very colorful, but they are actually given the role of the damsels in distress, much like Peach and Daisy and a few other princess characters. Anyway, well, actually, Rosalina has yet to be kidnapped, so, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> these seven girls are so amazing. And they're actually kind of tough if you think about it. After rescuing one, they build a clear pipe so you can go off to the next world. And after rescuing all of them at once and the kingdom is saved, they show up at the end saying goodbye and thanking everybody. Also at the end of the game we get to see fireworks forming their shape which is so adorable. Also after the game, well after the story of the game, they get to build a rocket ship so you can venture out into space. They are very useful with tools, much like Mario and Luigi. Anyway, they are very, 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 very fun. In fact, the green one, who I'm pretty sure is the leader, I mean, she is the first one you rescue, so yeah, was a playable character in Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. This is probably the best thing ever to come out of the Super Mario series so far. I mean, aside from Cappy and Tiara from Super Mario Odyssey, I feel like they need to be featured more. They are great characters. Oh, and before I go, I did say I was going to talk about the nitpicks I have. Well, actually, there's only one, and that is you're unable to change your character while on the world map. Which is kind of disappointing, but oh well, what are you going to do? So do I recommend this game? Yes, I do! You are going to love it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye!